lesson this morning. I just pray that you would be with me. Um, you'll give me clarity of thought and mind. I know that the ability I have to do anything comes from you and you alone. So I just ask you that you will please just control your thought, my mind, and every word that comes out of my mouth. Fill me with your spirit, Lord, this morning. And at the end of the class, can we say what a great and mighty God we serve in your name. Amen. Amen. Um, as we continue our science school lesson and overcome an overload, um, on the lesson this morning, I apologize, but I did not put uh, the title. Um, but the title of, of this lesson this morning is Solitary Refinement, You Need a Sanctuary. Now, the last two lessons, first of all, the first one we talked about tired of being tired. And we just talked about how we are just going, going, going. And then last week we talked about the need for a Sabbath, which is to just break and get away and take a rest. But what we're going to come to realize is that it's it's more than just um, breaking away. It's what you do during that time that you break away that's very important. And so in this lesson, chapter 3, it says solitary refinement. You need a sanctuary. And so we want to start the lesson as John chapter 15 verse 4 it says abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me and that's a very familiar verse there um, that we have read over and over and we'll get more into it to the lesson as we go on but i want to think i want you to think with me for a moment if if i say the phrase the pacific ocean just think about it for the moment. I know we had a, uh, a class uh, uh, trip to the, the, the pools there, and, and you know, it was just, it was beautiful, right? I mean, we just saw it, it was beautiful. But when, when I say the phrase, the Pacific Ocean, does the beach or the sunset come to mind? Um, waves crash in upon the shore one after another, seagulls encircling, dip, dipping, resting, you know, I guess that's the most the one part that's not enjoyable about the beach if you have food is the seagulls just nosedive all the time trying to take your food away, right? I mean, I remember uh, when uh, Val and I first got married, we went to uh, SeaWorld, and I had this uh, I had this fish, and and I saw this 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 baby whale coming up, and I said, "Oh, this is great! This is great! He's going to feed it." And Val's got the camera ready to take the picture. And right before the well came up, the seagull just came and swooped it away. I'm like, come on, just killed the moment, <laughs> right? So maybe I shouldn't have said anything about the seagulls, but then, you know, the sun quietly slipped it away um, and the idea that it will return later. And, um, you know, and sometimes we ask ourselves, you know, what draws us to places like that, right? What, 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 why do we want to go there? And why do we desire them? And what is it about such places that immediately lift an invisible load off our shoulders? I mean, when I when I go to the beach, I don't know about you, but I just I immediately am relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? How about you? I mean, you know, when you find a place that you can get away from where there's peace. What what draws you to that? Um, anybody? I'm opening for comments here, you know? Um, if you don't want to, it's fine. Um, but I, I think we know it's because of the, the peace and the serenity of that idea of being there. Um, it's, it's beauty, it's silence, it's solitude. I mean, it's just, just so very 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 peaceful and i believe that in all of these things all of us need a sanctuary or a place of refuge and protection um a month ago i preached on psalms 46 1 and i said god is our refuge and strength right a very present help in trouble and when we looked at that it's it's right there. He is our sanctuary, right? He is the one that we go to. 
And we need a place where we are removed from the world, the busyness of life, and a place where we can clear our minds and think. Mm -hmm. It's so important. And I, and I think the, the sad thing, and, and I think the hard thing is, I think sometimes we, we figure this out too late in life. But what I've come to realize is, even though we may figure it out too late in life, it's never too late to start. Mm, okay. It's never too late to start. And however, the truth of the matter is, most of us, you know, we, we can't afford to go to the ocean every weekend to, um, to take time to relax, right? I mean, you know, it'd be nice. Um, I remember one time, and I know I keep bringing these stories up because they really did happen, all right? And, and you can go talk to Val, she'll fact check, you know, she can fact check my stories because, you know, it's true. But um, when we lived in Long Beach, there were times when I liked to uh, go down to the beach and I just like to just sit and think about um, things that were going to be happening, um, you know, things that we needed to do, take care of. And I remember one time I was there and it was late at night, a little later than normal. And the next time, next thing I know, there's a spotlight on me. And I, you could have thought I was like running from the police, but it was a helicopter telling people the beach was closed, you need to get off. Oh. <laughs> so I'm here trying to enjoy myself, get away, have peace, and all of a sudden there's a spotlight on me, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> took that away. But, um, you, know, we, you know, sometimes we just can't do that. And believe it or not, you, you don't have to go to a beautiful place. You don't have to go off somewhere in the rugged mountains. You don't have to go off somewhere to, um, you know, find a sanctuary. It could be found right where you live, no matter who you are, or what your circumstances may be. Um, when I worked in, when I worked in Richmond, um, you know, I'd have to, you know, I managed a property in Richmond and the commute was like an hour and 15 minutes and I think now with widening it's 55 minutes so it's nice I, but I'm so glad I don't have to do it anymore but the thing was is when I went there I would commute and drive um, come lunchtime the only way I could have any privacy or enjoyment I have to lock my door and I tell my staff look I'm at lunch hold all my calls my messages if it's only disturb me, it's a fire, flood, or blood on the property. But besides that, just, just let it go. Let me have my lunch. And it would just be that it wouldn't happen. 15 minutes into my lunch, I'd get someone knock on the door and say, you know, Mrs. Soan wants to see you. I'm going to have lunch. And I asked you not to disturb me. And she goes, but she needs to see you. I said, well, tell her I'm not here. And my employee would go, well, how am I supposed to tell her you're not here when your car is parked in front of the office? <laughs> I said, you know what? You're right. And I don't want you to, you know, inadvertently need to lie because I asked you to do something. So I figured I, if I was going to get away, I had to leave the office. Well, I'm not going to drive all the way back home just to relax and have some time, you know. So I I found that there was this, uh, and I don't know if you're familiar with the Richmond area, but there's this place called the Hilltop Mall, mm -hmm. and there's some shopping centers there. And I believe it's it, it, the shopping area where the McDonald's is, there's an IHOP, and then um, there's a movie theater. So in this huge parking lot, they had a lot of trees, um, you know, in this parking lot and then there's these trees and then there's all these places of trees and I'd always find a place that had a lot of shade and I'd just drive my car and park there and I would just sit there because the the weather in Richmond is beautiful all year long there's about three weeks where it's a little miserable but I'd go there roll down my window get a nice breeze and I would just sit there in my car and I would either just read pray Listen to the best baseball team in the world, the LA Dodgers, because they were playing at that time on the East Coast. But I, when I started doing that, I realized when I went back to my office, I was refreshed and ready to go. Some of the problems and some of the issues that I was dealing with 
I would come back with a clear mind and where I was stuck on figuring out a solution to the problem, I figured out that afternoon how to solve that. But I believe it's because I was able to just get away, close everything away, and, and that was like my sanctuary during the week. Because I was able to get away from everything, shut everything down, and just be at peace. In order to overcome overload, we have to have a sanctuary that we are visit, that we go to. Um, I'm talking about a life that is characterized by regular, purposeful withdrawal from the world, Sabbath, in a secluded place called a sanctuary. And why do we retreat to a sanctuary? Why do why we do it to obtain? We do it because we want to obtain God's direction. And we want to obtain support and nourishment from God. I mean, that's the only way we're going to be able to do that. And we'll never really get clear direction that we really need if we don't allow ourselves to do this. We won't. We have to. We have to do this. And I'm talking about a regular, personal time where you meet with God one-on-one -on -one by yourself. You, you have to do it. It's important. It's critical. Um, if we're not, I, I just don't know how we're functioning. One man said, it has been said that no great work in literature or in science was ever wrought by man who did not love solitude. I mean, some of the greatest inventions, some of the greatest scientific Discoveries, some of the greatest things that we see today and we stand in awe were found by men who were willing to be alone for hours and hours and weeks and months at a time in order to find these things. And a strong part of the Christian faith is no large growth and holiness is ever gained by one who did not take time to be alone with God. And I understand we're very busy. I understand it. We're, we're, we're busy. We have an unbelievable, unbelievable amount of responsibilities. Um, we're carrying burdens. Just the prayer request alone this morning, those are burdens that we carry. And we carry with you, by the way. Um, so the idea of sanctuary is biblical, and it's essential for your life and mine. So let's talk about this for a little bit. The sanctuary, the principle, is, first of all, is ordained by God. The idea of sanctuary was first established by God in the Old Testament. It was the place where God established his presence and where the people could gather to worship him. So when we look at the Old Testament, we think about how did God, how was God present to the children of Israel in the Old Testament? Well, we know that he would guide them by what? A cloud during the day and fire by night. So that was his presence there. And then after they left Egypt and went across the Red Sea and they started their traveling through the, the wilderness, God established this thing called the temple. And in that temple is where the Ark of the Covenant was and the people would gather around and the priests would go in and they'd offer sacrifices and that's how they met, all right? Then after that, um, he, he first established the tabernacle, that's what it was. And then after that, David, when David established himself as king, and we, I talked about this in that message when I uh, preached on the, the rod of Jesse. I talked about how David was given the burden to build the temple, but he was not allowed to. Solomon did. And as a result of that, the temple was the place that the children of Israel would meet to worship the Lord. And that was how it was until Jesus came and then there's this great, wonderful uh, event called Pentecost. And when that happened, the Holy Spirit came upon the early Christians in Jerusalem, and there came a shift in this idea of sanctuary, where the sanctuary was no longer necessary a building. The sanctuary became the hearts of the believers. In other words, we carry the sanctuary around with us, for it is in our hearts this means that you and I can meet God one-on-one. -on -one. That's what happened. No longer did we have to present sacrifices to the priest or anything like that. 
because Jesus Christ died on the cross for us, we were able to have that personal relationship with him going forward. And that's why we are that tabernacle. And as a Christian, you and I are the temple of God, and we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. 1 Corinthians 3.16, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? We are the temple, and we are the place where God dwells in us. But the question is, is if we're not spending time with God, what good is the temple that we have? I mean, he's there. He wants to dwell with us. He wants to be present with us. And the only way that we can nurture that is being alone with him one-on-one. -on -one. And that's why Jesus said, abide in me. But please understand that abiding requires one-on-one -on -one time. Abiding means going to stay, not just a quick visit. Just as our marriages, our relationships, our friendships, whatever they may be, in order to establish good, long-lasting relationships and friendships with one another, we have to spend time with each other. Mm -hmm. My wife and I praise the Lord, and I, I give God all the glory and praise for this. Um, in August, we will be celebrating, let me see, it's 22, uh, 31 years of marriage oh. in August. Praise God. And it wasn't always perfect, you know, there were some bumps. But I love to spend time with my wife. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we we just we drove and we ran errands and and we we talked, we laughed, we made fun of each other, we just you know we, we did everything. But why do I do that? I do that because that is how I nurture my relationship with my wife. If I'm not doing that on a regular basis, then my wife and I are gonna drift apart slowly and slowly and I don't ever want that and that's the same thing when it when it comes to our relationship with the Lord is that if we are not spending that time that we need we are going to slowly be drifting little by little away from the Lord that's why we have to constantly be on our relationship constantly abiding constantly meeting with him as much as possible to nurture that relationship. Now, we've ex we established the idea of a sanctuary and a place that we meet. What are the three main characteristics mm -hmm. of a sanctuary? And let's go over those. There were, there's solitude, there's silence, and there's stillness in this sanctuary that we're talking about. The first characteristic, solitude. I'm gonna say something here. And I'm just telling you right now, it's got to happen. But solitude involves an interruption of human interaction. You just, you've got to be alone. Um, and it, not only just human interaction, our devices that we have, we've got to be able to put those down. Um, one of the things I've realized is, and I want to make sure that that's the case right here, is I have to make sure that my device is on silence. Because if I'm reading or doing something and I hear the chime that I've got a message, whatever, the first thing I want to do is grab it and look at it and see what's there. And, and you just got to be willing to just put those things aside for a while when you get along with the Lord. And if we, if we don't if we, if we don't do that and we're not willing to say no to these things, it's going to be very difficult to nurture that time with the Lord. Um, you know, Casey was talking to me this morning about Latin, and I was laughing because I was going to say something about Latin in the lesson this morning. <laughs> but I know a lot of you know who Spurgeon was. He's a very famous preacher. He's called the Prince of Preachers. And he said... You know, you need to learn to say no. It will do more good for you than learning and reading Latin. Now, you have to understand something. Back in his time, knowing Latin and reading Latin and understanding Latin was critical. And he said, look, in life, you've got to be able to say no to certain things. And it's so important you do that. 
It's even more important than learning how to read and understand Latin. And a lot of times, we, we have a hard time saying no. I'm the, I'm the most guiltiest person um, of, of, of not saying no when I need to. I mean, if, 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 I, if I had the ability to do so, I would do everybody's work for them so they could be relaxed. But there's no way I could do that, right? I just I end up burying myself in the grave. So it's so important that we get away and 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 we just cut off interaction. I remember um, on Saturday mornings when and I'm so so glad David's not here, but um, <laughs> Saturday mornings, because Val worked hard Monday through Friday and Saturday mornings I told the kids you do not talk to your mom until 9 o'clock that is her quiet time that is her resting time you do not talk to her you just let it go and I, believe it or not David would come up to her and just go up to her and say mom I just you know, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not waking you up. <laughs> I just want you to know you're beautiful. <laughs> and then he would leave. Basically, he was saying, Mom, I'm hungry. can you get up? I'm hungry. <laughs> That's what he was really saying. <laughs> but there was an importance that you got away. Um, and our greatest example of that was Jesus. Uh, Matthew 14 verses 22 through 23 says and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side and while he sent the multitudes away and when he had sent the multitudes away he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come he was there alone now we know that Jesus is the son of son of God 100% human 100% did he really need to go away and pray? I, don't, I think because he was 100% man, yes. But on the other side, he was 100% God. But I think he was showing us an example that he himself had to get away in quietness. Mark 135 says, In the morning, rising up a great while before the day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Again, Jesus got away. And then in Luke 442, it says, When it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him, that he should not depart from them. Now, that last verse is a little different than the other verses that we had talked about in this one it says he departed and went away but the people saw him now you know you sometimes wonder why are certain things put in verses like this and I and I think it's to show us something that no matter how many issues or burdens you're dealing with they're going to come back and find you they will. Um, when I finally got to the idea that any work I take home, if I leave it at my desk, when I go there the next morning, it's going to be greeting me with the biggest smile it can give me. And here, I think what it's trying to tell us is that Jesus went away. He went to a desert place to get alone, but yet still the people saw him. Look, you're, you've got to be able to learn how to push certain stuff away so that you can be alone because it's going to be there waiting for you. So you can either, you can either just, just immerse yourself in it at all times or you could just say, okay, I'm just going to step away for a while because it will be there when I come back. And I think that's what that verse is trying to show us there. So... We need solitude in this sanctuary. Now, if solitude's an interruption of human interaction, then silence 
is the interruption of noise. And, you know, on Wednesday nights, we're, we're going through that series by Jim Bird, Quieting the, the Noisy Soul. And, it, and he talks about the, the, the reason why we just have to find peace and quietness throughout our lives. Because the busyness that we have, it, it makes it so hard for us to hear what God wants us to hear from him. Quite simply, we weren't designed for constant noise. Um, we have to have some silence or we will get overloaded. Mm -hmm. We will. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever been to New York City, but I have. And it's never quiet. It's never quiet. I mean, I, I went there during the day and then I looked out my hotel window and it's just as busy. It's just as busy. And I thought for a minute, how do people live in this where it's never quiet? The noise is just as constant. Psalm 62 verses one through one and two and verse five says, truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, and he is my defense, and I shall not be greatly moved. My soul wait thou upon God, for my ex expectation is from him. We need not just a place of solitude, but we need a place where it's quiet. And then the third thing I want to talk to you about this place of sanctuary is stillness. Stillness is the interruption of activity in our life. It is the ceasing of all tasks except for the one single task of meeting with God in the morning or whatever that time is. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but it seemed like as my children were growing up, I mean, they'd get up in the morning and they were nonstop. I mean, they're going, 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 going. And even when they went to bed, they were still going, going, going. And um, sometimes that is the same way in our life, but we have got to be able to just get away and be still. So I have Psalms 46, verse 10, which I talked, preached about a few weeks ago. It says, be still, know that I am God, and I'll be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Psalms 23, verses 1 and 2, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That second verse says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still water. I mean, the Lord wants you to be in that situation so he can speak to you. You know, um, my wife's favorite story is uh, in the Bible is David and the mulberry trees. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've ever read that story, but it's a great story. And it was at a, you know, it was one of David's lowest points and, and he was trying to determine if he should go and attack the Philistines or not. Mm -hmm. And and the Lord said, wait and listen. And when you hear the wind in the mulberry trees, then you go. Well, here's the deal. If David went off and just started doing what he needed to do and doing other things, he would have missed out on hearing when the wind was blowing through the mulberry trees. And if we're not careful, we might just miss that wind blowing in the mulberry tree in our life because we're not willing to be still to know who God is so that we can hear what he has for us. So how do you find a sanctuary in your busy life? You know, I. This is something that you will have to determine on your own. But I've, I've given some ideas here. I, I talked about how I found that place in Richmond for my during lunch. Matthew 6, 6 says, but, when thou, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Just a couple of thoughts here, and, and then we'll close. You say, well, how do I find this sanctuary? How do we do this? I remember when I was at Bible college, there was this one friend I'd had. His name was Tom Poussin. And I needed a ride to church, uh, to, to the church. 
because the college was like, I don't know, like 10 miles or five miles from the, from the college. And I said, hey, Tom, can you give me a ride to church today? You know, it was Wednesday. He says, no, I can't. He goes, why? He goes, that's my sanctuary. Okay, I, you know what? Someone argue with the guy, just like, you know what? No problem. And believe it or not, that very day I was in another car and we were driving and I looked out my window and there's my friend Tom. He was by himself, but I noticed one thing. He was sincerely praying. That was his sanctuary. That was when he was able to be alone and pray to God. Um, one of the things I did when I commuted, I would, I would listen to the... Uh, the, the Bible on CD now it's you know MP3 or you know however you do it Bluetooth, but that's how I did it. Um, yesterday morning I was, um, you know, I was sitting on my sofa. I was sitting there and, and I was done my reading. And I wanted to pray and, and I you know normally I I like to go into my office and shut the door, but my my puppy had got up on my lap. Not my lap, but got up next to me and was laying on me. And I know that if I woke him up, <laughs> there would be no silent time. Right? I mean, when he's sleeping, that's a good thing. That's a great thing. So I just said, you know what? I'm just I'm just gonna sit here with, with Raider on my lap right here, sleeping, and I'm just gonna pray. And I prayed and and, and when I started to pray, I just, I said, Lord, I, 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 I know I should be in my room, my office with the door shut. And I, this is just, just so weird, just so awkward. And it was really interesting. I felt this calmness of the Lord just saying, no, it's okay. Because it's just me. That sanctuary wherever it may be it, it could be anywhere but it's just your private time alone with you and the Lord and it could be any place as long as it can be a place of solitude silent and stillness let's pray our gracious Heavenly Father we thank you for this morning that you've given to us and just realizing the importance that we need a sanctuary a place that we can be alone with you I pray that we will just take the principles and the guidelines here and apply it to our life accordingly, Lord. Because really, if we are not spending time with you, Lord, we're not getting fed, we're not being nourished. I ask that you will be with the service today. Just be with every aspect of it, the music, the memory verse, the special the message. Just pray that you will be in it. But more important, Lord, if there's anybody that is in the service today or listening online that don't know you and have a personal relationship with your son, Lord, that they'll know what that means today in your precious and wonderful name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Thank you.